Welcome to video three in my series on respiration and the fundamentals. We're doing exam practice again. Uh, this time we're going to go through a slightly more tricky question, which is... Oh, I've gone past it. This one here. The main stages in anaerobic respiration in yeast are shown in the diagram. This is a good place to start. So, uh, first clue. Uh, most students miss this. You've got a spot that is anaerobic respiration and it's in yeast. This will come in handy later. So the main stages in anaerobic respiration yeast are shown, yeah, 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 yeah. Glucose to pyruvate, which is glycolysis, we know this, and then pyruvate to ethanol. Okay, name process X, well, we've already identified. If something starts with glucose and ends with pyruvate, it's got to be glycolysis. No problem there. Glycolysis. Happy days. Moving on, give one piece of evidence from the diagram, which suggests that the conversion of pyruvate to ethanol involves reduction. Okay, now, in photos, sorry, in, in respiration, um, so much is about redox, about one compound being reduced while the other compound is oxidized. This is really key. Um, so, what we've got to do to spot when there's a reduction happening, we've got to spot something being oxidized. And when we spot something being oxidized, uh, if we want to spot something being oxidised, we try to spot something being reduced. So our key here, in this stage, is by looking at the state of the coenzyme. So that reduced coenzyme comes in and becomes not reduced, which means it's been oxidised. Okay, so it goes in as reduced NAD, or NAD, oops, or NADH, um, and it, it loses that hydrogen. So it becomes oxidized. This stage here, um, this stage just here, uh, is an oxidation. So this is the oxidized part of the redox. Um, so that means that pyruvate, which is in the main reaction scheme, is being it's been reduced to ethanol because it's accepted the electrons. Or well, it depends on where you think about it. Um, if you're a chemist, you might think of oxidation in terms of loss of hydrogen or loss of electrons and therefore reduction is gain of hydrogen or gain of electrons. So the pyruvate gains from the reduced NAD, and that's our evidence right there. So NADH is oxidized to NAD. That's our evidence, because the reduced coenzyme is being oxidized, therefore the other compounds, the pyruvate, is being reduced. Now, we can take that further. Um, we can say that the NADH, if we want to, we can say that it donates hydrogen or it donates electrons to, uh, to pyruvate. And that's what really does the reduction. I guess that's more for the chemists. But hey, let's move on. Explain why converting pyruvate to ethanol is important in allowing the continued production of ATP. So why is it important for continued production of ATP? Okay, well, let's go back to our diagram. And once again, we're going to be concentrating on this guy, NAD. So we need NAD up here. We need NAD to be reduced to allow glucose to be oxidized to pyruvate, which yields us for ATP from an investment of two. So this, we get a profit of two ATP, which is great. It's not a lot of ATP, but in anaerobic respiration, we're thankful for all that we can get. Now, if we don't have this stage here, we don't regenerate the, uh, the non-reduced form of the coenzyme, because we need that coenzyme to go back to here to allow glycolysis to continue. So this whole question is about allowing glycolysis to keep going. So without the, uh, the generation of ethanol, we can't, we can't oxidize, or we can't, well, we can't oxidize the reduced coenzyme, or we can't regenerate NAD. Okay, or probably a better way to phrase it for this question is that um, that it allows the regeneration 
of NAD. That doesn't make any sense the way I've written it, so let's rewrite it completely. Um, yeah, it allows the regeneration of NAD. But why is that great for producing ATP? Um, because it allows glycolysis to continue. allows glycolysis to continue. I'm sorry, my handwriting is atrocious. There we go. Allows regeneration of NAD and allows glycolysis to continue. Let's move on to part B. Give two ways in which anaerobic respiration of glucose in yeast is similar to anaerobic of glucose in a muscle cell. So muscle cells are animal cells, make a note of that to prompt us. Um, how is it similar? Well, for one, it produces ATP, which is good. We like ATP, no matter how small the amount we get. Okay. You could also say that it involves production of pyruvate as an intermediate. That works. So as an intermediate, we get pyruvate. So pyruvate smack bang in the middle. There we go. Two similarities. Next, it wants us to identify two differences. So still, we're talking about um, muscle cells. So still, we're comparing yeast with animal cells. So we'll put that down there to remind us. Um, how is it different? Well, look at our diagram. What have we got? It produces ethanol and CO2. OK. We can work with that because we know that uh, the animal cells certainly don't produce ethanol and CO2. They produce pyruvate. No, they don't. That's such a lie. They do produce pyruvate, but that gets converted to lactate or lactic acid. There we go. Nailed it. So in animals, lactate is produced. Now, that doesn't get us the mark. We've got to compare it. We've got to say what the difference is. Um, so we'll say in animals, lactate is produced. And we'll use a good word, whereas, I love that word, whereas in yeast and also in plants, it's ethanol. So it's a fermentation reaction in yeast and plants, which is great for producing booze. Second part of the question, well, what's the other difference? Well, you know, yeast produce CO2, animals don't. Handwriting's getting steadily worse, but we don't care. Okay, two differences, awesome. Moving on, a bit of more of an apply part of the question. Uh, here's some apparatus. Students investigated the effect of temperature on the rate of anaerobic respiration in yeast. The apparatus that they used was shown in the diagram. The yeast suspension was mixed with glucose and the volume of gas collected in five minutes was measured or recorded. So gas syringe, that's gonna help us measure the volume of gas. Layer of oil to exclude air, well, that's to maintain anaerobic conditions. There we go, maintain anaerobic, cool. Uh, each student click, repeated the experiment and the results were pooled, so repeating and pooling. Why is that good? Okay, so when you repeat your results, you increase reliability. Now, this may be difficult for some of you guys, depending on when you did your GCSEs, because the GCSE current spec say that repeating results and getting them together increases accuracy, not reliability. However, the A-level specification hasn't quite caught up yet, so when you say you get loads of results and you pull them together, that's all about reliability. Now, the final thing it allows us to do is identify anomalies. There we go. So loads of data makes it really easy to spot any data that doesn't fit the pattern. Anomalies. Nice. Last part of this question is a, a mathsy bit. At 30 degrees C, one student obtained the following results, 38.3, 27.6, and 29.4, and that's in five minutes. But it wants us to calculate the mean rate of gas production, but it wants it in centimetres cubed per second. Okay, so 
Calculate your mean, first of all. 38.3, add them all together. Plus 27.6. Plus 29.4. If you can hear, hear an odd noise in the background, it's a dog scratching itself. Sorry. And then, because it's a mean, we divide by the data that we have. So if I bash this really quickly um, through a calculator, we get uh -huh, 38.3 plus 27.6 plus 29.4 equals 95.3 divided by 3, which equals 31.76 recurring. So I'll move that over a bit. Uh, remember that number. So 31. 31.76 recurring. Okay, but we're not done yet because that's our answer in centimeters cubed per five minutes. We need to divide through by the number of seconds in five minutes. So 31.76 divided by five lots of 60 seconds equals 31.76 divided by 300, which off the top of my head is 0 0.106. Done. There we are. Two marks. Most people uh, stop at this point. You need to go all the way to calculate in centimetres cubed per second. I hope that's been helpful, guys. Stay tuned for video four. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you.